One of three here at Brands Hatch. It's the Indy circuit in use, supporting the DTM this weekend. Andy Bury lines up on pole position for the first race with Luke Williams alongside him. Three races at Alton Park, three different winners, remember? They are two of those said winners, with Jake Cook the third only being on the third row of the grid after qualifying held earlier on in the day. Now, we've had earlier delays here at Brands Hatch with rain falling, a qualifying session for Formula 3 cars being stopped, so this race will go as close as it can to the curfew this evening at Brands. The lights go out, Andy Bury races away, and the cars power their way now up towards Paddock Hill Bend for the first time. Bury it is who leads then. On board with Jake Cook and there's somebody off already there. Looks like Melroy Hemskirk, the Dutch driver making his EcoBoost debut. He runs wide through the gravel. It's a slippery road. It is indeed Hemskirk who went so well here a few years back in the Formula Ford Festival. Well, he's off the road but back on again right at the tail end as Anti Bury leads the way. Down they come then. For the first time into Graham Hill Bend, you can see how slippery the road is. Bury leading the way from Eric Lichtenstein. The Argentine driver is second, third. It's Luke Williams, fourth is Kevin Corcoran, and fifth, really busy defending is Jake Cook. He's got Fred Martin tied behind him, and a really sideways Melroy Hemskirk comes out of Graham Hill Bend, desperately now trying to catch up to the rest of the field. Out of Clark Curve comes the race leader, Antti Bury leading the way, about to make his way up over the timing line. He'll power past the pits. Now he's got to try and build a lead early on. Here's the replay of the start. Look at all the wheel spin from Jake Cook on a wet road as he lets out the clutch. The car snakes away from him almost, but he managed to get off the line OK, defending from Fred Martin Dye. Melroy Hemskirk arrives at Paddock and just goes rally crossing. Runs out of traction, slithers off through the gravel, and that drops him right to the tail end of the field. So Antti Bury leading the way, and he's managed to build up a big, big gap already. All he's got to do now, easier said than done, is preserve that to the flag. On board with Jake Cook looking for a way past Kevin Corcoran, now heading up towards Drake. He goes round on the outside, or does he? Jake hunting for traction, there's often a bit more to be found on the outside line and he's done it, great job. Through goes the underfunded Jake Cook, fingers crossed he's going to be able to get the funding together for a full season because it would be a real shame if Jake couldn't complete the year. He's had a race win and the ex Janetta Junior racer is a very rapid young British driver indeed. So he's going up now towards the left and right, Surtees and McLaren flick and he's bearing down on his teammate Luke Williams. Remember, Cook a winner at Alton Park. Williams, a winner at Alton Park as well, and those two now starting to get themselves together for a battle that will be on for third place over the line. Anti Bury leading then for JTR, second there, the Argentine, Eric Lichtenstein, the one non-winner yet within that leading gaggle. Third is Williams, fourth, you're on board with him now, is Jake Cook, powering their way up towards Druids, and those gaps are coming down. Look, second, third, and fourth, Williams goes to the inside of Lichtenstein, door closed. The white-nosed car of Lichtenstein hangs on to second place, and Williams now in this really awkward spot. He's having to defend and attack at the same time. In theory, this squabble now for second place really should enable the leader, Antti Bury, to drive away from the rest of them. Lichtenstein never raced at Brands Indy circuit before, defending as they go now left, then right, up through Surtees, through McLaren, and you're on board with Jake Cook, who's getting closer and closer and closer. Turn right out of clearways now. Antti Bury leading the way, and behind him the three Jamin Randy girls squabbling amongst themselves. They're actually being caught again by Kevin Corcoran. They're holding each other up, and that means that Cook is still vulnerable from Corcoran. Fellow ex Janetta racer is to the inside. Jake dives and he's gone through. Picks off Luke Williams. Really good bold effort that, and he's gone by. Now, what can Luke Williams do to fight back? Luke went really well around here last year at the DTM weekend on his return to racing. Out of Druids he comes, Jake Cook just drifts a little bit wide out of the corner, Luke Williams looks for a gap, is there one on the run down to Graham Hill Ben? No siree, because that line's already covered by Jake Cook, on to Cooper straight they come. That lead gap is dwindling isn't it? Anti Bury, rather than driving away from the three red Jamin Ramley girls behind him, he's being caught. Eric Lichtenstein, look, he's been able to gap Jake Cook while Jake worked away past Luke Williams, but Anti Bury's lead now might be on borrowed time because it's five for the lead, all the leading quintet as one as they come out of Clark Curve and Antti Bury now may well be struggling. Over the line they come. Bit of a wobble from Luke Williams who dives around the outside of Jake Cook. I think he might have come across a slower car there. He got a toe perhaps and caught him a bit faster than he was anticipating. He had to jink out of the slipstream and go onto the grass. That has compromised the run from Luke Williams, but Antti Bury now is really having to defend. He has been reeled in by Eric Lichtenstein. You're on board with Jake Cook in third place. Luke Williams having come across him Almost to his surprise when they came over the line and sorted himself out and has kept fourth ahead of Kevin Corcoran. But they make the run now along Cooper Strait and can Anti Bury hang on in there? You're on board with Luke Williams, he's fourth. Can he get himself onto the podium? Not if Jake Cook has anything to do about it, he won't. You see the way the cars with the turbocharged 1600cc engines are squirming on this greasy road as the drivers put down the power. 
on board with Williams. This time he's alongside Cook as they come across the line, but look at the leaders overlapping. Lichtenstein to the outside going up towards Paddock, but again, anti Burry is able to hang on to the lead, but only just as now he switches to the inside, does Lichtenstein. The Argentine driver has got the line for Drew as he should go through. He's on the inside, they're absolutely wheel to wheel, and Cook and Williams overlap as well. Burry gets hung out to dry. Lichtenstein picks up the race lead. Burry defending second on the run downhill. Williams, you're on board with it, tries to go third. He does go third on the inside, so it's Cook who gets hooked down to fourth place. Two shuffles within that leading quartet, one for the leader, one for third. Anti Burry drops to second, Jake Cook drops back to fourth, and Luke Williams driving like a man inspired, now challenging for second at Clearways. Can he go through? Not very, can't, but Anti Burry drips out wide, and this is his view. There's Williams to the right, he's gone through for second place, great stuff. Luke Williams goes through, picks up second, it's now a Jamin Racing Services 1-2. You're on board with Bury again as he comes out of Paddock Hill Bend and a big lose ahead of him. That's Williams who's trapped it away into the barrier as he goes, breaks the front right corner. And Luke Williams knows straight away that that race is run. He worked so hard to get second place and a corner later, off he goes. Shows you that the road is still very wet and treacherous. So Eric Lichtenstein leads the way and with the demise of Luke Williams, there he was. And there's the replay, just hooks a wheel over the wet curb that spins him off at Paddock. Anti Bury retakes second place. Big whack into the tyres. And this is how Luke Williams saw it. Comes through Paddock, just drifts onto the kerb, round goes the back, and wallop, right into the barrier. Steering wheel off, driver hops out, Luke Williams will race again tomorrow, and fingers crossed for better fortune. So, in this, the fourth round of the championship, it looks like we're going to get a fourth different winner. Eric Lichtenstein is clear now of Andy Burry. This is the fight for third. Jake Cook ahead of Kevin Corcoran. And Jake hooks a wheel over the wet grass. Can he hang on to it? As Eric Lichtenstein takes the flag to win for the first time in the Dunlop MSA Formula 4 Championship of Great Britain from Andy Bury, from Jake Cook third. And Kevin Corcoran comes through for fourth. But Eric Lichtenstein has driven hard for that win. I'm very pleased he is too. Over the line there, Fred Martin Dye for Enigma Motorsport comes home to be fifth. Behind him sixth is Fabian Welter to be the leading Duratec driver home. And Melroy Hemskirk is eighth after his trip through the gravel at the very first corner. As for Luke Williams, he knows it was a mistake, but he knows he's got two more races here at Brands this weekend to make amends. Confirmation of the top five, Lichtenstein, Bury, Cook, Corcoran and Marty Dye, with Fabian Welter coming home victorious within the Duratec class. Fourth race of the year, fourth different winner, Eric Lichtenstein. It was a very, very tough race, but hopefully we, we beat Bury in, the, in a good time, and then it was just pushing, pushing, putting the pace. And at the end of the race, we, we had like two second gap. So it was quite a good, good race. And T, second in race one, how was it? Well, it wasn't the best race for me. I got a very good start, but then after three, four laps, Maria Thais just got off and then it was big struggle and uh, Lichtenstein managed to overtake me. And yeah, not, not good for me, but second place, good for the points. Two more races to come at Brands Hatch after the break.